How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 15, the final week of the regular season, and we're sitting at 10 and 2 here in our first year at Eastern Michigan as the offensive coordinator. Now, we have a little bit of recruiting to go through, uh, but we're going to be going into the conference championship ne game next week. Uh, if we go down to our conference standings, we were in a race with Ball State, but they've dropped to third in the division. Central Michigan, our rivals, have jumped up into second place, and that is because the Chippewas have actually beaten Ball State. Uh, they beat them 22-17. to So the final game of the season, they're able to jump up on top there. Unfortunately for them, it's not enough. That means that even if we had lost to Northern Illinois, we would still be going to the conference championship game and... Curious to see who it's going to be against. Most likely Kent State. Now, we didn't play Kent State, uh, so that's nice and that we won't be uh, rematching anybody. But uh, I don't know. It would have been nice to get revenge this game against Akron. The Zips actually end up with a solid 8-4 and four season. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed with that. There's a lot of impressive records in the MAC this year. Uh, I mean, 10 and 2, 8 and 4, 8 and 4 just in the West. So hopefully we get some good bowl representation. And hopefully we do well in those bowls, get wins, maybe improve the standing of the conference just a little bit. Let's take a look at our top 25 before we go through the bye week. Uh, is there anything crazy? I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of games because typically it doesn't happen. Texas Tech will play Texas, so there is a ranked matchup. Army Navy will be a thing and uh, ULM will play ULL. So some rivalry games and a ranked game to top it all off. Now we have uh, 500 points to put into our recruiting this week. I'm curious, do we have anybody that can come for a visit? We have a few players coming on this bye week and we can add Mark Morris, the 69 overall wide receiver onto that list. Mark, not the quickest guy. Mm, he can kind of catch, not in traffic. Not spectacularly, but, uh, I mean, he could be a nice addition somewhere down the line. We will schedule a visit. We are the only team really looking at him, so we'll get a few extra points there. Uh, we have offered scholarships to everybody, so we just have 500 points to give to whoever we see fit. And I'm not a huge fan of really most of the players that we haven't given points to, but we're going to give it to the quarterback, James Haynes. He's 63 overall, so not likely to become a good quarterback. But he's like, okay, he's a scrambling quarterback, which means he has decent speed and acceleration. His throw power is better than I would expect at 79. Uh, it's just that accuracy, not the greatest. So we will give him some points. And then looking at the top of our board, are we still in contention for some of this? We have a visit with Frank Blair, which is good. We're fighting LSU for this Juco corner uh, with Brandon Williams. We're fighting Central Michigan. We should stay unlocked at least until uh, the offseason. Avery Rawls, we are leading Ball State. So all honestly looking pretty good. We just have to uh, be smart with our points, it seems like, in the offseason. Let's go ahead and advance the week here towards that conference championship game. Currently we're ranked 17th. I'm curious if something crazy could happen. I don't see what, but something could happen that could allow us to move up. And we, well, we get Lionel Goodwin, a, uh, a running back to commit to the team. I was going to give him those 500 points that I gave to the quarterback, so I'm glad I didn't do that. Not a great player to pick up, but a player uh, in a bunch of recruiting battles. And let's see, Central Michigan picks up a bad free safety that we were looking at and the kicker that we were looking at. So we did end up getting locked out there. Hopefully the other kicker that we're looking at that Central Michigan was also recruiting, uh, we have a chance to get, but you never know. We actually did move up two spots. We're number 15 in the country, which seems crazy. Absolutely crazy to me. I'm going to remove... Uh, these players from our board. That's really weird how uh, that's working. But yeah, get rid of Brandon Williams. And we'll scroll down to the bottom here and get rid of Jeff Johnson. But it's, uh, let's see, what's his name? Luke Clark. That Yeah, okay, maybe he's just an easy pickup for us now because Central Michigan has removed him from their board. So, I mean, 99% locked with a 13,000 point lead over Western. I think that there's a pretty decent chance we could get him to commit. Let's take a look at the matchups this week for conference championship week. Obviously, 
10 and 2 Eastern Michigan, 7 and 5 Kent State in the MAC and the Conference USA. It's Southern Miss and FIU. Uh, SEC is a big one. Number seven Georgia at 10 and 2 will play number four LSU at 11 and 1. Both of those teams, uh, did they play? They're definitely looking for it. They were uh, are Georgia's favored to win. And they did not play in the regular season, so a big meeting for them. In the Mountain West, it is Boise State in Hawaii. The Broncos are ranked 25th in the country. Uh, the ACC is NC State and Georgia Tech. Oregon USC in the Pac-12, that's a big one. Number one USC versus number five Oregon. The Ducks with two losses. The Trojans with just one loss. And the Ducks are favored to win this one as the B-plus team to USC's A. The only thing that the Ducks have going for them is their rush offense. Uh, and I guess the turnover differential. So that is uh, an awesome matchup to see. Did they play? They did. They played early in the season. Oregon lost that game. So one of Oregon's two losses was to USC, their second game of the season. Their other loss was to Texas A&M, who ends the season at 6-6. Six and six. And the final conference championship game is the Big Ten between number three Nebraska and number two Michigan. This is, we're, we're getting spoiled with some of these conference championship games, especially the Power Five ones, because it's another huge matchup. 11 and one Nebraska, 11 and one Michigan. Uh, this is a throwback. I feel like it's like the 80s or the 90s. Uh, the Blue Bloods are back out in force. Michigan, again, the better team statistically, but Nebraska is being picked to win this one. We also have a couple of conferences that don't have conference championship games. Uh, so Houston ends up winning the American in the Big 12. It's Oklahoma State winning it 8-4, number 22 in the country. They edge out Oklahoma. Well, actually, it could be close. I don't actually know who's going to win this one. Do we have a tiebreaker between the two of them? Uh, Oklahoma State won it, so I think that should mean that the uh, Cowboys are going to win the conference our two independents finished at eight and four and one and eleven byu avoids uh a 0 and 12 season by beating a three and nine two lane 37 to 21 and this is kind of weird but they also took florida state to overtime uh that would have been a pretty upsetting upset for the seminoles how about the Sun Belt? Our original conference, it looks like it's going to be Georgia Southern winning that one. 10-2, 6-2 in conference and finishing pretty much the regular season at number 21 in the nation. All righty, let the rumble begin. Are we going to be uh, favored? We are. I mean, we should be. We're 10-2. We're ranked 15th in the country. We are the higher overall team, better record, doing a lot better in a lot of spots. Uh, their turnover differential is better than ours, but somehow we are plus three on the season. And I think I'm going to chalk that up mostly to uh, me not controlling the defense. So they are actually able to get turnovers. Kent State, they started the season with a loss to an FCS team, lost to Texas and Ball State, went on a big winning streak, uh, lost to Bowling Green and Akron, and then finished the season with a win against Buffalo. So they're coming in with a little bit of momentum, but again, that win is against the 2 and 10 team. We should be a much bigger challenge. We will be the home team for this. I don't know if we're playing at Rainierson or not, uh, but that does mean that we will get to wear our home uniforms for the first time since the update. Kent State, I thought, had some really cool um, jerseys and alternates, so I think that we'll go with one of those. And as far as the alternates I saw, I think it was alternate two I liked quite a bit. Goodness, these, these guys have a lot of different combinations. 13, 14, wow, 15 alternates. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go with alternate one. Uh, I don't know. I like the blue helmet with the blue shoulders, but then the yellow pants. It's a nice bit of change up there. Now for us, we haven't had a chance to wear the standard home uniforms so we're just going to do that. Represent the brand in the conference championship game and try to get things done. Uh, we're a 77 overall to their 75, and they have a 79 offense and a 73 defense. So we do have the overall advantage, but it is very slight. This should be a pretty closely contested matchup. All right, uh, man, even points wise, we're scoring the exact same amount of points. We're putting up similar numbers on total yards of offense, passing yards, rushing yards, all so close. It's just the defensive numbers 
that stand out for us. Uh, first in the nation in points allowed, yards allowed, and rushing yards allowed. They do a pr pretty solid job at stopping the pass, it seems, but not the run. So it looks like Jesse Wagner is going to be getting the ball a decent amount. But I'm play calling, so who knows? We'll probably end up throwing like 10 picks in this game. Their top players, uh, I think this is for next year, is the running back, the center, and the quarterback. But they're not very good. 77 overall at a quarterback. We should be able to stop. And it looks like he is their starter, so I'm not too worried about that. Our defense should feast. And then this is also big. Um, a doubtful outside linebacker out, a probable defensive tackle, and a for sure outside linebacker. He's out for the season. Uh, Jackson might come back at some point, three weeks. Not sure if we'll get him back for the bowl game. Well, the gray field is going to have to wait. We're at Ford Field, which I think somebody mentioned that in the comments. So, uh, sorry if I didn't pay attention to that. Uh, but yeah, not at home. We'll be in, what is it, Detroit? Uh, let's hope for the, the good turnout. We will be getting the ball to start this one off. No wind, obviously. And I was a little overzealous on simming the kickoff, and I tried to sim a play. It was ruled a 15-yard penalty against the defense, so uh, this is a great start as far as I'm concerned. Jesse Wagner on the counter to start the MAC Conference Championship game, and... That's a solid handoff up the middle for six yards as we're almost at midfield almost immediately. Again, we will be trying to focus on running the ball, even though in a spot like this, man, it is so tempting to throw one up. But just give it to Jerome Simmons up the middle and let him have a good carry. I'm a little bit curious why Jerome is in so early in the game. Hopefully it's not an injury for Wagner. Uh, yeah, he's back in already, so that's good news. Wilson... We'll come in motion. This is John Wilson, and we're going triple option as we've already crossed midfield. This could be a big one. Wilson gets the pitch, makes a man miss with the juke, stays on his feet through the first bit of contact, and he got 20 yards on that triple option. Absolutely beautiful. This is how you love to start these ones off. Give it to Wagner again. If we don't have to throw a pass for the entire game, I am not against that. Three yard carry up the middle for Jesse. And if there's enough chaos, what the heck would we do if somehow we sneak into the playoff? Remember, we do do an eight team playoff here. So things could be pretty crazy. Play action pass works for a yard as I just went check down to be safe. And I'm not going to lie here. I'd be pretty disappointed if we didn't come up with a touchdown on this drive but we're running it on third down. The counter to Wagner, he's got a block, one man to make miss. The juke doesn't work, but it slows him down, makes him hesitate, and allows us to move the sticks. Now, another thing that I have seen mentioned in the comments is that our play calling is a little bit bland. That is gonna change next season. Uh, typically, I like to take, oh, never mind. Oh, I stopped saying because I was excited. I thought that was a touchdown. Simmons only gets two yards. Anyways, I like to take the offense or the playbooks of my coordinators. We'll for sure do that on defense. I think what we'll do on offense is take the base playbook from our offensive coordinator next year and then just kind of customize it a little bit. All righty, third and four at the five. This might be the worst place to decide to pass, but we're going to pass it anyways. Looking for the end zone on this one. Waiting, nobody open, nobody open. A kind of coming open, trying to make the throw, and it's Ernest Bennett, of all people, the tight end, coming down with it. Ed Bird with a great throw on the run, especially for him. And just like that, we've taken the lead in the MAC Conference Championship game. So the defense will get the chance to work on their first drive. Uh, okay, seven-yard rush by uh, Kent State on the first play. We're going to hop in with the defense and see what they can do. Need to slow these guys down. It's maybe a triple option team. They definitely came out in some sort of option there. But we get the stop, third and five. And it would be huge if the defense got a stop this deep into their territory. Expecting them to pass. They will stepping back, looking for it. And he just throws over the middle. Pressure was about to get there, but just not quite quick enough as they go into the hurry up here. Joel Smith, the Kent State quarterback has his first completion of the day, as they're going to go with the option once again. First tackle is shed, and then he gets the pitch out on the second tackle. That's going to work for 10 yards. We continue with this hurry up. 
We can't allow that option to work that well. Glad that we're getting to the quarterback, but it's not working well enough. Option again. A couple of broken tackles there, and it's a first down. Is this just going to be their play calling? Just options all day long. Quarterback already looking tired, which is good news for us. And they go handoff up the middle, and it is absolutely destroyed by Chris Banks. So it's a second and 12 now. So we just are trying to keep them. That one looks like it's going to be stopped. Two broken tackles, though. Almost a third. I'm surprised Dan Clark didn't get uh, back to the line of scrimmage at least. So we do thankfully get the tackle for loss. Brings up a third and long. And if that's going to be a theme for our defense, we're in trouble. They need to get those tackles. There's another broken tackle. Thankfully, a lot of green jerseys in the area. It's fourth and 11. The offense is going to get a chance to cook again here. And as much as I want to just pass the ball, we're going to run it on first down. Obviously, give it to Wagner up the middle. The blocking more than good enough there. We find the gap and we get eight yards. If we could come out and make this a statement win, who knows? Maybe we could have a backdoor slot in the playoffs. Ed Bird keeping it on the read option. He's got a first down for us. And this will be a good chance to see if maybe we've drawn the defense in. We're going to go with the play action pass. And there's our easy one to throw to Nixon, who surprisingly got a couple more yards than I expected. That's going to actually end our first quarter. And it, it's been a good one. Defense comes out, gets a stop on their first drive in the offense. Looked near unstoppable running the ball. So into the second quarter we go up seven to nothing. Start this second quarter with a second down. Give this one to Wagner as we'll look to bounce it to the edge. And I actually got lucky that time. I wanted to cut it further outside, ran into the lineman, and he just kind of pushed us closer to the line. There was definitely space to get positive yards there, but uh, just couldn't quite get Wagner in the right spot. We'll see if we can do it this time, though. There's a good gap. That's across midfield and another first down. Couple of deep safeties on this play. We'll look to pass anyways. Not going to audible out of it. and We'll go check down. Just give it to Wilson. Honestly, I kind of expected Zach to break that tackle, but just didn't have a chance to build up ahead of steam. I'm definitely trying to be safe with the passes that we're throwing. And as a result, we've started the game four of four. And oh no. Ed needs to get that tackle. Wow, a big hit. Wagner fumbles the ball and Kent State recovers it. That is brutal. So the offense looked like it was rolling, but an untimely turnover completely could shift the momentum of this one. We'll see. If they can do anything with it. Quarterback sits in the pocket and then scrambles. Just nobody open. So good coverage for us. But we got to maybe have a guy spying him. Can't allow easy points. If we can prevent them from scoring or hold them to a field goal off of the turnover, that'll be good. But man, this hurry up is doing numbers to what is supposed to be one of the best defenses in the country. Almost inside the red zone now for the first time. Kent State's going to hand the ball off out towards the edge. Plenty of space. And that'll be a first down about the 17-yard line. Kind of expecting an option on one of these. It's not going to be this, though. A handoff up the middle is good for a couple more yards. That was Brent Oliver's sixth carry of the game. Will he get another one here? No. Stepping back to pass. There's a man open. Maybe the tight end gets down to the 11. It'll be third and five. Not a huge passing game yet, but this quarterback starts three of three, and he's going to go five wide looking for it. Goes out towards the corner, and he just missed his man. Some miscommunication, and that's going to stall the drive out. Maybe a little bit lucky because that receiver had enough space at least for the first down. Would have been inside the five. Instead, it's a field goal attempt. That one not going to be blocked. A little bit close. He goes through three to seven now. And it'll be up to the offense once again to get back to work. I'm going to give the ball back to Wagner. You know, those fumbles are a pretty freak occurrence for him, so I'm not too worried about the ball security from our starting running back. He comes out with the eight-yard carry there after the fumble, and now we're going to step back to pass again. A is wide open. Give it to the tight end, and Wilson gets 20 yards downfield. They tried to bring pressure. And we made him pay. I don't know if we've run back-to-back -back pass plays yet. 
But we're going to give it a try here, seeing what we can do. I like Broussard's route. Broussard has the one-on-one, -on -one throwing it up. He's going to come down with it. That was a poorly thrown ball on a weird route from him as Bird's getting hit, but somehow just slots it right into the breadbasket there. And Ed Bird has shown up to play today. Broussard going to be our motion man. Look how heavily stacked this defense is on the right side of the line as we're running the triple option away from those guys. This has big play potential. The pitch to Broussard and no one's going to be there to catch him. There he goes. Dan Broussard into the end zone as the team gets over 100 yard rushing. And we find our 13th and 14th points there. Just absolutely caught the defense out of position there. We really make them pay. So the extra point is good. It's an 11 point lead and we'll see what the defense can do. As just like that, we get them into a third and four. They ran the first two downs for a total of six yards. We'll expect that maybe to pass. You got to watch for that short one over the middle. I think somebody's opening. He does throw it. And there's the completion. Just a little bit too predictable. Our, uh, coverage over the middle, maybe from the linebackers could be a little bit better. Maybe the hurry up has a little bit to do with it as they're going to hand this one off up the middle. That one, again, first tackle, not quite the best, but only gave up a yard. And they take the first time out. Uh, now inside two minutes to play. Kent State knows that they need to score here. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, but if you don't get into the end zone or at least uh, a field goal here, you could be in trouble. That incomplete pass does stop the clock, but unfortunately for them, it brings up a third and nine. So we'll almost certainly see uh, another pass. And that one sails over the head of the receiver. Joel Smith started the game good, but is struggling now. So that made it fourth and nine. They had to punt it away, and we get the ball here. Pretty rough field position. They get a good punt off, uh, but we have all three timeouts in a minute and 44, and we're going to look to strike immediately on first down. I don't like what I'm seeing. We're going to check it down, give it to Wagner, and Jesse breaks the tackle, and he's going to get the first down to stop the clock there. Jesse trying to make up for the fumble, and that'll help, certainly, as uh, Ed Bird 7-7 seven to, seven to start the game through the air. This could be a risky one, but we find Dan Broussard, and he's got a first down, showing the speed there. Minute and 29, and still all of our timeouts as we'll look to throw again, and I'm sending Broussard deep he has shown to be uh capable here in that one. Oh wow things got all mixed up a bunch of guys were running into each other i didn't see what was happening kind of threw that one into triple coverage and hey i came into this game saying uh that my play calling was gonna screw us over and kind of does so there that's our second turnover of the first half one not my fault one absolutely my fault Shouldn't have thrown that one. I got a little bit greedy. I just, you know, we don't pass well that often. So when it starts to happen, I get excited. Joel Smith, thankfully, misses another receiver. But I think the time crunch kind of got to me there. We had three timeouts. We definitely could have run the football a couple times. But live and learn. Uh, quarterback finds a man. Somehow makes the catch as he's kind of falling out of bounds. That one stops the clock across the 30. With a minute and nine, still two timeouts for these guys. What will they do here? This one going to be play action. A quarterback over the middle finds a man, but he's short of the line to gain, so they'll have to take their second timeout. And on second and inches again, probably expecting them to pass. This might be a free play. Looked like it would have been an offside. No flag yet. And they fumble the ball, and the defense recovers it. So we're going to have 59 seconds and a lot of distance to cover, but a chance to score anyways. So the defense bails us out, but we got to make sure that we don't get hit with a safety on this one as I'm throwing up a scary one and Broussard can't come down with it. Oh, I just saw the pressure coming and knew I had to get rid of it, but that was not smart. 54 seconds left. I'm going to run it on second down just to try to get away from some of the pressure. We'll give it to Wagner, see what he can do. Not a whole lot of blocking behind the line, but there's a ton in front. Unfortunately, one block just doesn't quite land. So uh, that could have been a first down and a whole lot more. It doesn't work out, though. And this one will as we find Wilson on the steam again. And that'll stop the clock for us. Just got to keep throwing the football as much as we can, but as safely as we can. And this one, we're just going to take the yards and take our first time out. 
This would be an impressive drive, to say the least, if we could go 95 yards and score. Wagner gets the catch. Makes some guys miss, and I'm being told by the game how to spike the ball like I don't already know. The game doesn't know, though, that only cowards spike the ball. So we're just going to snap another one and take a sack and take a timeout. <laughs> Apparently they implemented some sort of microphone into this game because the game absolutely heard me talking crap and decided to uh, let me know what it thought about that. Serge Mitchell, deep. I'm giving it to him. He's got a step on his man and it was underthrown. Oh, Ed, you got to get that out in front. Team so far, perfect on third downs today. Got to be honest, I don't really like the chances on this one. Third and 17. Hoping for the best. Mitchell uh, double covered. Stepping back. We're going to throw a tough one to Jesse Wagner, and he can't hold on to it through the contact. So it's fourth and 17. I wanted to throw up a Hail Mary, but I didn't hit the uh, hurry up in time. So coach is apparently just going to punt this one away, which is, I don't know, showing no faith in me. A lot of hang time. Short punt. Man, look at that. Now they get a chance to throw up a Hail Mary of their own. We'll see if they actually go for it, though. Two seconds. Don't be surprised if they just run this one up the middle. No, they are going to go for the Hail Mary. Pressure gets the quarterback. He's hit as he's throwing. He's lucky that one was just incomplete. But that's how the first half is going to end. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Up 11 points. Kent State does get the ball to start the third quarter. We should be up a lot more, though. Um, just a couple of mistakes. That interception for me is foolish. And some bad play calling on that second final drive of the half. Um, but all in all, defense has made big plays. The offense has made a solid amount of big plays. Guys really stepping up. Um, we just got to keep playing the way we are and we'll come away with a conference championship. So it'll be up to the defense to start this second half. And we'll see what they can do. A returnable kick on the kickoff. And again, a broken tackle at the first contact. Keeps them, uh, I don't know, pretty solid on the return. Defense on first down allows four yards. Second down, they give up nine yards on a first down. And on this first down, it's four yards. Not getting the early stop, so we're going to hop in and see what the problem is. Just need to get pressure. They saw Kent State started the game with a lot of options. And then move to more passing. We haven't really seen an option in a while. That run goes for nothing. It's been a lot of runs up the middle and then a lot of passes lately. This one, maybe a screen. I'm not really sure. A weird one, though, for sure. We stuff it out at the line of scrimmage, and just like that, it's fourth and six. So we force them to punt it away. And once again, we're starting our drive from the 11-yard line. They have a very solid uh, special teams when they're punting. Hopefully we can burn him here. Ed Bird with the uh, read option keeper gets us a easy four yards on first down. And now that the clock isn't an enemy of ours, we're going to continue to run the ball a little bit more. Let Wagner do his thing. And oh man, he's doing it well today. Seven yards on that carry, 62 on the day. I see no reason to go away from the hot hand. So we'll give it to him once again. Off tackle, pressure in the backfield though. Corner gets in there, and it's a loss of a yard. Well, this could be a really dangerous decision. We're going to take a page out of their playbook, though, and go with the option. A pitch has to go out early. It's a bad one. Simmons missed. How does he not pick that up? Oh, my goodness. That is disastrous. Jerome comes in for what would have been his second carry. I make a bad pitch as I'm getting hit, and somehow... He doesn't even fall on the football. It's a read option keeper for their quarterback. And we're going to be fighting tooth and nail to keep him out of the end zone. Giving up a field goal isn't the end of the world here. As they've got three backs and it's a handoff up the middle. That one stopped again at the line of scrimmage. Third and goal. There's a chance here. Definitely expecting them to run this one again. I don't see them passing. And there it is. A handoff up the middle. Pressure. Oh, man, on the defense, but they step up, only giving up a yard. It's fourth and goal now, and it is the field goal unit on the field for Kent State. They made their first one. It's a 28-yarder. This one's from 20, and he's got it. So, oh, from an 11-point lead to an 8-point lead, just like that. 
We uh, got to work on the ball security. Two fumbles and an interception on this game as we're midway through the third quarter. Run up the middle for Wagner. That is a lot of space for the running back, and he continues to churn him out. We'll go with the play action, though, on this first down as we approach midfield again. Looking for something. A is open. It's Broussard, and Dan might be having the game of his season so far with his third catch of the game. Ed Bird, even though we have that interception, is still having a good game. 12 to 16 so far. And making some decent throws. As Wagner again up the middle, and there's nobody there to stop him. He'll be over 100 yards in no time. Really marching down the field on him. Simmons has come in. Now he gets his second carry on the counter, and he's got a decent amount. I still think it's pretty inexcusable, though, that he wasn't able to recover that fumble. Very disappointing. Second and six will go to the air. Pressure's coming for them. We'll get rid of it. Nixon had it in his hands, but the defense, absolutely beautiful there to strip that one away. That incompletion brings up a third and six. And that puts a lot of pressure on us. The only third down we haven't converted was the third and 17. This one, the blocking was good, but I just didn't feel confident on when to cut it north and we don't get enough. Now, coach wanted us to go for this one again on fourth down, but once again, I'm overruling him. We got all of that one and I'm going to take the field goal. We'll match their score, get it back to an 11 point lead late in the third here. Definitely, I think we got to take the points. It's really nice knowing Harris's range on those. I know he could hit a 45-yarder. So 44 should be nothing if we get all of it. We did. What can the defense do? They get a decent stop on first down. Allows them to get back to the line of scrimmage there on third down. And we jump in for this third and 11. If they can get the stop and force the three and out here, it would be huge. Five wide for Kent State. Quarterback will step back looking to throw. Nobody open over the middle. Again, miscommunication. And that's a problem with a 77 overall quarterback. He just doesn't seem to have that accuracy or awareness. And his receivers aren't bailing him out. So... 33 seconds left in the third quarter. We take over, running it with Wagner, who unluckily got tackled there. 55 shouldn't have been there. Want this to be the final play of the third quarter, so we'll go ahead and let the clock run down inside five seconds before snapping it. And then I'm just going to heave it away. Thankfully, near a uh, receiver, no intentional grounding, but not a way that you wanted to end the third quarter. Uh, off we go to the fourth. A low scoring in second half so far. Just a pair of field goals. 17 to 6. Uh, we're looking to close this one out and get our 11th win of the season and walk away with the MAC title. Gotta be honest, not sure I've called the right play here. But we're giving it to Wagner up the middle. Just try to pick it up. He's been running really well. And he did it again. Oh my goodness, the offensive line creating canyons for him to run through. That carry puts him at 101 yards on the day. And I'd like to give it to him again, but we're going to give it to Mitchell on the end around. See what Surge can do. Trying to get it north. 83, man. If he would have been picked up on the block or 63, that could have been a big one. It's only three yards for the star receiver at the end of it, though. And we'll step back to pass on the play action. Maybe looking for him again. They're bringing some pressure. I'm going to give it to Mitchell. Let him fall behind the blockers. And somehow he stays on his feet inbounds. That was just great awareness as he gets 12 yards. Definitely a weird play, but it works out in our favor. Absolutely. How about uh, Simmons? Jerome off tackle. No blocking out towards the edge. So we cut it back inside and we get six. And as we march down the field here, I'm kind of thinking maybe we should start trying to burn the clock. Get out of this game as quick as possible, especially with how well we're running it. And I think, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I know that it is only a two-score game, but I'm still, I, I don't know. I think getting out of this one sooner rather than later would be beneficial. The longer Kent State has to have us make a mistake, the better they're going to do. Pat Robinson just gets back to the line of scrimmage there. And maybe we catch him off guard with the pass play on second and ten. A little bit of a play action. A could be open. No. No pass interference there. Yes, there is. Oh, just ran into him. We got lucky there, but I'll take it. Kent stage coach can't be happy with that. Almost seems 
like a bad call because it was just unintentional. They ran into each other. But I am not going to complain as we can just run Simmons up the middle. He's going to break a tackle. There's a flag down, though. Maybe a makeup call as this one is probably coming back. And yeah, it is a holding there. Well, first and 18, we're lucky it happened two yards downfield. And actually, that works out really well for us because we just continue to burn the clock on this fourth quarter as Pat Robinson on his second carry is going to get us back to the original line of scrimmage. So we're coming to the end of this game, and it looks like we're going to win. I want you guys to hit the like button if you think we're somehow going to sneak into the playoffs. Also, if you just like the video, that would be... Uh, a you know, a good reason to hit it as well. Kent State takes their first time out. And we've got this inside two minutes to go. I know it's a long shot and I keep saying it, but you never know. Crazy things happen in these games. Uh, it would be absolutely insane. Ed Bird loses four yards on the option there. It's fourth and 10. So they take the timeout again. And so the kick team will come out again inside two minutes. This makes it a three score game. Uh, two score, 15 point lead, 14 point lead, 14 point lead, a two score game. I can do math, albeit not very well. Uh, all right, defense, one more stop in this game is over. Kent State going to be passing the ball. First pass, a completion with a big stiff arm downfield. They get 18 yards and stop the clock. Sounds going to get all crazy as the fans here are just losing their minds. A minute and 30 on the clock. Back to throw again. Pressure coming, but not enough. It's a deep throw downfield. It's caught inside the 15. Number 80, Larry Jenkins burns his man for 47 yards. And now this is looking a little bit scary. If they score the touchdown, there's a minute and 24 left. Quarterback, quarter of the end zone. It's dropped by his receiver. He was completely unguarded. That is so painful, I feel like. If you're this quarterback, he's made some bad throws, but finally makes a good one, and his guy can't hang on to it. It doesn't matter, though. Oh, he had another man open, but he can't get a foot in. Our secondary is getting torched right now, but Kent State just keeps shooting themselves in the foot. They can't keep getting away with it, can they? Quarterback... Just throwing it short, and this time short of the line to gain. It's fourth and seven with the clock moving. So they're going to have to go for this one. And this is all or nothing, essentially. They can get a first down, but you got to imagine that's almost not enough with how little time is left. Quarterback has a man short of the line to gain. He looked like he got it, and they are going to call it first and goal. Kent State's hopes stay alive. Our defense not quite in position, but a false start from the offensive line is going to allow us to take a second and get set. This is so critical. Those five yards could prove massive for us in keeping them out of the end zone. Play action, and there's the man wide open over the middle. Saw that one the whole way. And, uh, man, this is awfully close. Pending this extra point, it could be just a touchdown game with 49 seconds left. If they recover it, they still have a chance. But obviously, recovering one of these is easier said than done. If we get it, we can just kneel it out. It looks like it's fielded cleanly. Just hold on to the ball. And it's Jonathan Nixon that seals the deal for us. So we're just going to come out in the victory formation. Take a knee a few times and get that 11th win of the season. This one should have never been as close as it was, but sometimes that's just the way things happen. Uh, we're going to give this to Jerome for one final carry. Please don't fumble, Jerome. <laughs> we can go ahead and just go into the hurry up and watch this clock wind down to triple zeros. And just like that, our first season joining the team... Well, we're able to make it to the conference championship and win it. Although, who knows if it's me. The defense really played a, a huge role this season in all of these wins. So I think, honestly, uh, if we have a, a worse defense, we probably don't make it nearly as far. Kyle Harris, our kicker of all people, is the player of the game as we can just go ahead and lift up that MAC trophy. Uh, not a very uh, fancy one, but it is what it is. Golden flashes 
They're just going to walk into the locker rooms here at Ford Field. Awfully sad about the way they played. So how about that for a game? Low scoring, a lot of field goals. And we honestly managed to hang on at the end. That got a little bit scarier than I thought. We way outrushed them 184 on the ground. One yard less than them through the air. We got demolished on the turnover battle. Uh, two turnovers, I'm going to say, are my fault. The bad pitch on the option and the interception. Uh, but I can't really handle or I can't control Jesse Wagner getting just demolished by a linebacker. Uh, but honestly, yeah, pretty solid. Kyle Harris, player of the game, kicker, maybe deserves it. Got his extra points, got his field goals. Uh, maybe did enough. Wade Benjamin, our linebacker, had the forced fumble on a, the one turnover that we created. So that's pretty solid. Um... Yeah, honestly, just all in all, an okay game, but with a great outcome. So we have won the MAC championship. We can add that to the trophy case. And now let's go through and see uh, who's able to win the other championship games. These are very important to the outcome of a lot of things in this season. Uh, in the CUSA, a game that really doesn't matter at the end of it all, it is... Southern Miss losing to FIU by three, and honestly, pretty close one. LSU Georgia for the SEC. This one could be massive, and it looks like it's, uh, yeah, Georgia winning it 42 to 35 on that one. So an upset, maybe you could say there. Both teams at an 11 and 2. LSU still stands a decent chance of making it into the playoff. In the Mountain West, we have Boise State and Hawaii. It looked like, yeah, Boise State. No, the numbers got a little bit weird there. Boise State loses to Hawaii, so the top 25 team gets upset there. Both uh, teams end the season 9-4, and four, and the Rainbow Warriors get a nice win there. Georgia Tech, NC State, both teams ranked in front of us, so certainly we should be moving up in the polls no matter what after this game. And it's Georgia Tech just bringing the hammer down on NC State. The Yellow Jackets win it 56 to 21. In the Pac-12, USC and Oregon, a top five matchup. Can the Trojans stay at number one and punch their ticket into the playoffs? They can. The Ducks with their third loss this season fall by a touchdown, 35 to 28. And the Trojans for sure are heading into that playoffs, probably with the number one uh, seed. 12 and 1 on the season is very impressive. And then the other very impressive one, Nebraska, Michigan. One of these teams is getting their second loss. One of them is probably getting knocked out of the playoffs here as well. Taking a long time to sim through that one because it just ended the the week. Uh Derek Moore, the Nebraska quarter or the Nebraska running back wins the Heisman, upsetting Brandon Brown, that Tennessee running back, who I thought it had it in the bag. Uh, 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. I'm pretty sure that the Tennessee running back looked a lot more important. We're playing in the Fiesta Bowl against Nebraska. That could change with the playoffs. All I wanted to see was who was winning between Nebraska and Michigan, and it looks like the Wolverines have done it. So Nebraska falls there. We move up to 14th in the country. Hey, I am totally fine with uh, a New Year's Six Bowl like this. Well, I certainly didn't realize that it would just sim through the week there. But hey, here we are, number 14 in the country. Somehow we only move up one spot. I guess there was only so many teams that we could have jumped and were slated to play against Nebraska, uh, who is definitely favored to win and probably will wipe the floor with us. If that stands, though, we are again still doing the 18 playoff, but we're going to save the suspense and set that up uh, at the start of the next episode. So either we'll just be playing our bowl game or somehow making a surprise visit into the playoff. I don't think it's going to happen. I'm not going to force it, obviously. But what a storyline that would be. Let's take a look at our final top 25 poll before the uh, bowl season goes through. Our top 10, USC, Michigan, Georgia, Cal, Nebraska, Coastal makes it up a little bit. LSU, Penn State, Iowa, and Purdue rounds out the top 10. This is just the coaches poll. We should probably be looking at the BCS. Uh, not a whole lot changes there, except it's Oregon at 10th. Iowa, Florida, Purdue down in 13th. 
and that's where we're sitting at 14th. So I get why we're not ahead of a bunch of these three lost teams, um, mostly because we're a G5 school. Still hurts a little bit to see though. Uh, how about the rest of the top 25? Nothing too crazy except Georgia Southern being up there. So good on them. The uh, the Sun Belt champions sitting at 21st in the country. And I am curious, are we ranked differently in other polls? 14th in the coaches and in the media poll, we are still 14th. We will take our unanimous uh, 14th. We know that Derek Moore won the Heisman, but I really do think... Okay, so let's see. Derek Moore had 1,400 yards and 18 rushing touchdowns. Brandon Brown, 1,700 yards, 23 rushing touchdowns. Do we have anything receiving? He had 300 receiving yards and five more touchdowns there. Uh, he won the Walter Camp and the Doak Walker, and I honestly got to imagine... He's a little bit upset about that. Now we'll save the All-Americans and the award winners for the next episode. So unfortunately, that is the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, if you're psyched to see that we could be playing in a meaningful bowl game, please feel free to go down, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already and you want to be notified when these new videos get posted. And then head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also a link to my Twitter, which we're still waiting to hit 200 followers on. Because right as that happens, we're going to be giving away an exclusive Goon Master t-shirt that I own the only other version of. And then there's links to our community Discord and the College Football Revamped mod as well. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goon Master. You guys are the great boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.